Today I'm going to build a custom dolly to work with the new Polk Smart Cart. I'm Ron Polk and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you'd like to get a detailed set of plants to build a smart wood shop for yourself, one of my workbenches, or the brand new Polk Smart Cart, there's a link in the description of this video. I have really been enjoying this cart. It allows me to have my bench or benches, the, the smart station, and the smart bench completely set up, loaded down to work, and I can move them around in the shop or on the job site right to where I need them and actually work off of them while they're mobile or if I need them to be really stable, I can flip up the bars on both ends, drop the bench down and make it as stable as it is without the cart. The smart cart was designed not only to make the workbenches mobile to be more efficient when I'm working, they were also set up to act as a mobility platform for putting the bench or benches all together and then being able to roll them up into the trailer. My original goal was to use the wheels, the mobility wheels that are attached to take the, the whole packed assembly up into the trailer and store it in the aisle so that I can quickly pull it out of my way if I just need to use the trailer or if I need to roll it out to set up on the job. I mounted the wheels. These are 800 pound wheels, so they handle the weight and they move very smoothly, but they're only two and a half inches. And I mounted them, the, the hardware, as far down as possible, making the wheels, when they were down, elevate the bench as high as possible. When I did that, I didn't like the stability as much. And even with them extended that far, I found that with the length packed up cube, when I was going into the trailer, it would uh, bottom a little bit. I could still push it over and get it in. I could make it work. I didn't want to deal with wearing the wheels out. They work so well this way. I, I came to the conclusion that I was gonna have to treat the mobility wheels and the wheels to transport, the transport wheels differently. I decided I wanted a big heavy duty set of transport wheels. So I found these five inch wheels that are rated 550 a wheel or 2200 pounds per set of four. I really like them. I have actually already built a mock-up cart out of some scrap to test it out. So I know exactly what I'm gonna build, but yesterday I got the material I need. And so now I'm going to build a cart that's going to do this for me. I use wheels, carts like this, a lot. I have 20, more than 20 of these. When I'm working by myself, I have so many things on the job. Either I have a big job, which is typical, and I need to pick a spot to store things or to put things for mobilization, and I need them out of the way. And then when it's time to do the install, I want to have them closer. So it's a matter of if I put them on the floor, they're usually in the wrong place. I've built a lot of houses all by myself from beginning to end. Now I've, I had some subs come in, but I mean, I was the general and I was the carpenter. So anything would work. I, I did, oftentimes I, you know, in the beginning early on, I did the foundation. So I had my own panels. So I was humping panels. To do foundations. I um, do the framing, uh, do the uh, siding, the finish, so all of those things. So when I stand back and look at a house that's all done, I realize that I have picked up and moved that entire house more than once. Because of my efficiency, I probably move it two, maybe three times. But if I didn't use efficiency techniques, I might move it as many as the typical contractor would, as many as eight or 10 times. Think about that. A, the full on house has to be moved in its individual parts and pieces many different times to get the job done. I have learned to take advantage of labor when it shows up on the job. So when the delivery driver shows up with the appliances loaded on the truck and our typical house you know, in the kitchens we put in, they have big Viking stoves and as well as double ovens and then uh, usually more than one dishwasher and then the microwave or microwave drawer, all of that stuff. So the appliance guy shows up and it's typical that that driver, delivery person would 
would unload into the garage. Almost every house we build has a great room and the kitchen is off of the great room. So there's a kitchen, maybe a little dining area and the great room. So what I've learned to do is when the driver shows up, I will help that driver unload, but I don't go to the garage. We take it to the great room or to the area that the kitchen is attached to. And at that time, I will have these carts. And I always keep at least two of these in my trailer in the smart wood shop. But I also have a stack of them. They're stacked back in behind the truck. And I'll just bring them to the job and they're just on the job. So when, the, when we bring the appliances in, we will put them on a cart. And if it's a big Viking five foot, four foot um, unit, then I'll put it on two of these. Same with the dishwasher, so that I can then take them and push them off out of my way. And then after I've got the kitchen installed and it's time for me to start putting in the appliances, I can roll the oven over close to where it's gonna go. A lot more efficient for me to be able to not spend the time thinking, where am I gonna store these? And then they've gotta be way over there. And then I've gotta think about taking my hand truck and moving them, I can just roll them on the cart. So that kind of efficiency has helped me not lift the house as many times, and also just to be a little bit faster and not wear myself out. Well, I use that for all of my materials, particularly finish. The tile shows up. Those are heavy cartons. Same thing, say I'll help you unload, and I'm, I'm gonna bring half the load in, help them you know, speed up, but we're gonna take them up and in to usually the great room is really w it was my central area and there might have been stairs up somewhere to bathrooms but if we could get them into the great room again i would take a couple of these carts i would usually save a couple of uh, pieces of osb sheeting that we that we'd cut some scraps i'd have a nice stack and i'd i'd lay a piece on the top of a couple of these and we'd stack all the tile and the grout and all the stuff to go with it and it's heavy but I can move it out of my way. And then if I'm gonna go up the stairs, I can push it over closer to the stairs and then just carry one box or two boxes up at a time. Trim shows up, it's typically 16 foot long goods. It's crowd molding, it's dimensional goods to do window liners, it's casings to do doors uh, and windows, all of that stuff. And again, most of it is 16 foot long. So I would take between three and four of these and put them in the great room again, and then I would have the delivery driver instead of dropping in in the garage. We'd, we'd you know, grab each, grab one in, haul it in and start stacking it. Now typically, in, in a trim package, it would be more than one stack. So I would use, if I use three of these per stack, one on each end and one in the middle, then I'd have three, we'd do say all the, all the dimensional, the, the um, uh, one by six, one by four, those kind of things, and get that all stacked. And then I would have the, the base molding, uh, usually lots and lots of that. I'd stack that. So I'd have a couple of setups of the carts. But again, it was really nice because I didn't get them all stacked in the corner and then I have to you know, go through and get down to this. I'd have a few stacks and I could move them around. And once the benches are set up, I could move closer to the benches. So that kind of efficiency. Hardwood the same way. 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet, we typically, my go-to material when I'm working with my clients that I always suggest what I love is hardwood, nailed down hardwood, either pre-finished or I really prefer sand and finish. So I get that stuff delivered. Again, the delivery driver shows up. I set up a couple of carts and we stack it on there and then I'm able to push it out of the way. So I really use wheels. All of this, I'm telling you because I'm thinking about that when I design this cart for this to sit on. I'm gonna have the cart that's, that this is gonna sit on. I'm gonna roll it out of the trailer. I'm gonna lift it, you know, I'm gonna take everything off and I'm gonna have this uh, cart that I'm gonna build with these wheels. It's gonna be longer and it's going to be the, about the same, actually a little wider than this is long. And it's going to be longer and have these much heavier duty wheels. So I want a double dip. I'm going to have it on the site 
So I want to be able to use that for some of those other things. So I'm thinking about that and thinking, you know, I've always wanted to do that. And I bought one set of these wheels and I think they were, I'm going to say $25 or $30 for a set of four swivel casters, all four of them with locks, and it included all of the nuts and bolts. So all of the hardware, I think for $25 or $30. I'll put these in the description of the a link to these uh, with our Amazon affiliate link. My goal is to make one for the cart, and there'll be one difference between this one and the other, it's just one sl slight difference. And then I'm gonna make five more. So I'm gonna have six in total. So I'm gonna order five more sets of these wheels. So I'll have six of these really nice carts that should hold up and last a lot longer to these. And in a lot of cases where I would need two of these, I'll only need one of the bigger ones. So I'm actually gonna be spending less by buying these heavy duty wheels and then, of course, the cost of the plywood. If you've been following along recently, you know I've been building a lot of stuff. The Polk Smart Bench, the Polk uh, Smart Station, the cart, the router table. I've been doing all of that with this Canusa. I've been calling it Can USA. They let me know that it's, they pronounce it Canusa. So Canusa 18 mil white birch lightweight. So my intention was to use a couple, uh, two sheets of this to make my six carts. But when I got this 10 sheets yesterday, they were, it, they were packed and strapped, cardboard edges and plastic, and there were two pieces of three quarter, uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is pine, it's not lightweight, but they're, they're gorgeous. And I don't care that the carts won't, they're not going to be that, you know, they're going to be 48 inches long and a little over 30 inches wide. So I'll be able to get, uh, because they're going to be 48 inches, I'll be able to get three out of each one. So I'll be able to get six out of these two sheets. And so for me, this ends up, the wood, wood ends up being no cost because this was packing, which really surprised me uh, that, that they packed it that way. But I guess they really wanted to protect the uh, the white birch so right after I show you exactly the design that I've come up with and how I'm going to get there then you're going to see me go ahead and break down both of these sheets so I'll have six separate pieces and then I'll set the five of them aside and wait for the wheels to arrive and then I'll finish the one that I'm going to use for the smart cart I had this piece of 12 mil that was from the very first cart prototyping when I was trying to use 12 mil and figured out that it wouldn't work. But it was already cut to the proper width that I needed that matches the cart because it was part of the original cart. So I took this and I, and I, I cut it to length to 50 inches. And I just came up with that. I figured out where the wheels were gonna mount and, the, and I'm gonna have this one attachment you'll see so that when I put the cart on it, it won't slide around. These holes are just left over from when, I, when it was part of the, the prototyping. I cut this one hole in it uh, that's dead center. It's the same hole. I use the same template that I use for the cart and for the benches. And this is just so that when it's mounted with its wheels, it's easy to pick up from either side and carry it like that. The other thing in sizing I wanted to think about was I have uh, these bends and those bends over there, and those are all on wheels for my access. So I'm able to pull things out and unload, and they're all labeled, and you know I have my HVLP and things. So I have some tools in those, and so I want those to fit on. So I thought about the sizing of those, and they'll fit long ways, and I can get three of them on this size. And then the longer ones, um, they're on wheels as well. I can get uh, one on this. It'll be a little bit bigger than I, this would be a little bit bigger than I need for that, but it'll carry it real solid. Whereas right now I have it on these and they're not quite long enough and I get a little sag off both ends. The other crate I use a lot of are these here, these really inexpensive uh, crates. I have stacks of them back there. With this width cart, I can put, Side by side, I can put two deep and then stack them 
and I can also go end to end. So I can get four stacks on one of these and with the load capacity, that should really help me with organization. With the way I've got those stored over there, if I can get those up on some of these carts and get four stacks, I can have stack in behind and a stack in the front. I can have them lower and then I can just roll them out and get access to both sides. So you can see I was considering a lot of different tasks for these as I designed them. I didn't want to go and build something just for the cart. I wanted them all to be the same and I wanted them to work in multiple applications. These are 50 inches long, so I thought, well, that's perfect. But then I got to thinking about the use of plywood with the width I need and with 50 inches, I could only get one out of a sheet of plywood and then I have a lot of leftover. So I've decided that I can afford to drop these down to 48 inches. So by dropping them to 48, and it'll be 48 minus the blade thickness, I'll be able to get three rips out of each plywood. So my two pieces of plywood, I'll be able to get my six carts. So that's my dimensions. It's going to be the width of the cart and then the width of the plywood. So now it's time to start breaking down some plywood. I have six dolly bases completed. They're all identical. Five of them I've set aside. This one, I'm gonna make one additional uh, adjustment to it for working with the Polk Smart Cart. I want it to work with both of my carts because I've already done this one mod to the other cart, I needed to match it up to that cart. You won't need to do that if you do both your carts at the same time, you will just have your dimensions and you can lay them out. But I wanted to make sure that these four holes were in the identical location on, to match the existing cart when I drill it into this cart, because the mod is actually going to be to the cart. So I've got these four holes. Now, dimensionally, there's no plans for this. This is really easy to make. This is one piece of three quarter inch or 18 millimeter plywood cut to the width of the cart, which you'll have that. And then I left it the width of the plywood. Now this ended up being 49 inches. You need to keep that in mind. If you get a piece of plywood that's 48, then these four dimensions that I give you would be different. And again, you don't really have to match to mine. You just need to make sure yours are all the same. So I've taken basically a pilot bit and I've drilled through so I've got four holes in the base of the cart. I'm using a two and a half inch hole saw for this. I'm not drilling all the way through. I'm gonna flip the cart over and finish the hole from the other side just so I don't get tear out. the only modification to the cart is to drill these four holes and then I use my same chamfer bit that I've done all the edges with. Now I'm going to take those four cutouts that I just took from the bottom of the Polk Smart cart. I'm going to clean them up and I'm going to attach them to the dolly. These donuts that we cut away from the bottom of the Polk Smart cart we obviously lost the wood from the uh, cutter itself, and then I sanded them and made them even smaller. And that's good because we don't want them so snug that we're fighting to get the two to mate up when we're in the field. And I'm going to use the same pilot holes that I drilled through to set those marks on the Polk Smart cart. I'm going to use those to put a center screw through each of these to center them up so there'll be equal room all the way around them. I'm going to first just drill a countersink hole. I'm going to start by attaching them with an inch and a quarter screw. This will give me a lot of bite, but it won't go through the other side. 
And now for a little extra durability, I'm going to put a couple more screws in each one just to really hold them down in case they get banged around in the field. Perfect. Now when I'm packing up, this will drop on quickly. And then when I'm pushing the cart around, this will resist the dolly from sliding out from underneath the cart. I like it. This is going to work out great. When I build the other five carts, when the wheels come in, I will make a pattern for mounting the wheels. So I'll get that all perfectly lined up. And then because I'm going to be doing four wheels per five, that'll be 20 wheels. So I won't want to sit there and measure that out every time. Now I, I owe you a video with the Pox Smart cart on top of this dolly with the smart station and the smart bench, the other cart on top, everything inside, and then rolling it into the trailer, bringing it out and setting it up. So I'll do that all in a single video. I've already done it. I had a prototype of this dolly, so I already knew exactly what I was making. So I've already done that test and that's why I knew exactly where I was going with this and I knew that it was going to work. That video should be a lot of fun. You're going to get an opportunity to see what I already know. To see that I can take this entire wood shop, this no compromise wood shop, and I can pack it up very small and I can move it around. I can move it into the trailer. I can move it distances. I can move it across the job. And best of all, if I've got a small shop, I can pack everything up at the end of the day, push it off into the corner and then bring the car in. If you like these videos, if you like dropping into the Smart Wood Shop, if you've learned anything, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And remember, when you subscribe, it won't make a difference unless you ring that bell because that's the only way YouTube will let you know when I put up a new video. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and have a great day.